The clamshell doors swing open with hydraulic precision. No pilot checks instruments, no crew chief scans the landing zone. Inside the forward bay where a cockpit once existed, a six-wheeled unmanned ground vehicle rolls up the ramp into darkness. The doors seal shut, twin general electric turbines spool to flight power, and 35,000 pounds of helicopter lifts into contested airspace, with nobody aboard to die if something goes wrong. This isn't a concept, this is October 2025, and Sikorsky just ripped the heart out of America's most iconic helicopter to prove a point nobody saw coming. 1347 hours. Association of the U.S. Army Exposition, Washington, D.C., the most radical helicopter conversion in military history, just emerged from 10 months of secret development. While defense analysts obsessed over billion-dollar sixth-generation fighters and hypersonic missiles, Sikorsky's rapid prototyping team solved a problem the Pentagon didn't know it could fix this fast. How do you keep the Black Hawk relevant when the Army chose Bell's V-280 Tiltrotor to replace it? Answer, you delete the humans and triple the cargo capacity by volume. The S-70 UASU Hawk represents something profound, proof that America's legacy platforms can leapfrog into autonomous warfare faster than adversaries can field their clean sheet designs. This isn't incremental improvement. This is Sikorsky taking a UH-60L airframe from 1989, gutting everything forward of the main cabin and creating the world's first fully autonomous medium-lift helicopter. 25% more internal volume than a crude Black Hawk. 14-hour endurance, 1,600 nautical mile self-deployment range. And it can carry payloads that would make a logistics officer weep. Four palletized cargo modules, entire HIMARS rocket pods, naval strike missiles, or swarms of attack drones launched mid-flight. The strategic equation is brutal. China's building autonomous systems at industrial scale. Russia's deploying unmanned ground vehicles across Ukraine's battlefields. And America's helicopter fleet, thousands of Black Hawks serving in 60 countries, faces obsolescence as pilots become the limiting factor in high-risk resupply missions. The U-Hawk changes that calculus entirely. Where a crewed UH-60 requires two pilots, crew chiefs, and life support systems, the U-Hawk needs only a tablet-equipped operator on the ground issuing high-level commands. Fly to these coordinates, deliver this cargo, return to base. The Matrix Autonomy Suite handles everything else. Takeoff, navigation, obstacle avoidance, landing, even opening its own cargo doors. Compare this to existing unmanned helicopters. Cayman's K-Max proved autonomous resupply worked in Afghanistan, but maxed out at 6,000 pounds external lift with no internal cabin. Northrop Grumman's MQ-8C Fire Scout excels at reconnaissance, but carries only 700 pounds. The U-Hawk lifts 9,000 pounds externally while simultaneously hauling over 4,000 pounds internally. It's not competing with small drones. It's obsoleting the entire category of medium transport that still requires humans in the cockpit. The development story reveals how fast American defense innovation moves when bureaucracy steps aside. Sikorsky's advanced programs director Erskine Bentley greenlit the concept in late 2024. 300 days later, not three years, not 30 months, but 10 months. The prototype rolled out at AUSA with twin clamshell nose doors where windows used to be, a front-loading ramp for roll-on cargo and third-generation fly-by-wire replacing every mechanical control. The team retained the UH-60L's proven systems. Twin T700G E701C engines producing 3,800 shaft horsepower. The upgraded transmission the rotor system that's flown millions of hours. They eliminated everything that supported human crews and poured that weight and volume into cargo capacity and fuel. Testing begins second quarter 2026. If successful, Sikorsky can convert surplus UH-60Ls at scale, and the Army has hundreds earmarked for retirement. Each conversion costs a fraction of procuring new autonomous helicopters while leveraging existing maintenance infrastructure and supply chains. Picture the operational scenario that validates this concept. Forward Operating Base Shkin, Eastern Afghanistan, 2033. Taliban forces control the valley approaches. Surface-to-air missiles make low-altitude flights suicidal for crewed helicopters. 
but the remote outpost needs ammunition, medical supplies, and water. Four palletized containers weighing 3,200 pounds. At 0200 hours, a U-Hawk lifts from Bagram with nobody aboard. Its matrix system navigates terrain following routes programmed to avoid known threat zones. Infrared sensors detect heat signatures, enemy encampments, vehicle movement. The U-Hawk adjusts course autonomously, rerouting through a mountain pass too narrow for comfortable manned flight. It doesn't care. It doesn't get scared. It executes algorithms optimized for mission success rather than pilot survival. 20 minutes from the objective, the U-Hawk's defensive systems detect radar emissions. SA-24 MANPADS operators are sweeping the valley. A crewed Black Hawk would abort or request armed escort. The U-Hawk calculates probability of intercept, determines acceptable risk parameters, and continues. If shot down, no families receive casualty notifications. Just an insurance claim, and a lesson learned for the next autonomous flight. The helicopter descends into the outpost at 0347 hours. Clamshell doors open, the front ramp lowers. Four JMIC containers roll out on automated pallets. The U-Hawk seals itself, spools up, and departs. Total ground time under 90 seconds. By dawn, it's back at Bagram, ready for the next mission while human crews sleep. But cargo delivery is just the opening act. The real revolution emerges when you realize what else fits through those front doors. Sikorsky demonstrated a 6x6 Hunter Wolf unmanned ground vehicle driving into the U-Hawks Bay. Now imagine the tactical implications. Autonomous helicopters deploying autonomous ground robots deep behind enemy lines. The U-Hawk delivers the UGV to a ridgeline overlooking a supply route, then loiters at altitude providing communications relay. The ground robot conducts reconnaissance, engages targets with mounted weapons, or plants sensors, all without a single human within 50 miles of the operation. Scale this across an entire theater. A dozen U-Hawks could sustain forward-deployed units indefinitely, operating in chemical-contaminated zones, nuclear fallout areas, or anywhere sending pilots would constitute criminal negligence. They could ferry anti-ship missiles to remote Pacific islands, deliver medical supplies during pandemics, or evacuate casualties from hot landing zones using pre-programmed routes and autonomous medevac protocols. The aftermath extends beyond tactical flexibility. Behind every U-Hawk conversion stands an industrial base that just learned it can retrofit legacy systems into cutting-edge autonomous platforms faster than China can field equivalent capabilities. Sikorsky's Connecticut facilities employ 17,000 workers, maintaining Black Hawk production and support. Thousands more across supply chains spanning all 50 states fabricate components. The U-Hawk concept means those jobs continue even as the Army transitions to V-280 Valors. More critically, it proves American defense contractors can innovate with commercial sector speed when properly motivated. No procurement contract exists yet. But the signals are clear. The Army's experimenting with autonomous resupply through near-Earth autonomy. The Marine Corps needs ship-to-shore logistics that don't risk pilots over contested beaches. Special Operations Forces require covert insertion capabilities. Allied nations operating Black Hawks globally could retrofit their aging fleets rather than buying entirely new platforms. The market isn't theoretical, it's inevitable. The only question is whether Sikorsky moves fast enough to own the category before competitors adapt. Consider the strategic implications. For 70 years, helicopters meant putting highly trained pilots in harm's way. The U-Hawk breaks that equation. Suddenly, dangerous becomes acceptable. Dull becomes automated. Dirty becomes somebody else's problem. The limiting factor shifts from pilot availability to aircraft availability and Sikorsky can build these faster than it can train crews to fly them. This is how legacy platforms stay relevant, not through incremental upgrades, but through radical reconception of their fundamental purpose. The U-Hawk proves the Black Hawk's greatest value isn't its cockpit, it's everything behind it. The lift capacity, the ruggedness, the global support infrastructure. By deleting the crew compartment, Sikorsky didn't diminish the Black Hawk, they unleashed it. So here's the question, 
If you commanded a forward-deployed battalion in contested territory, would you rather have crewed Black Hawks limited by pilot fatigue and risk tolerance, or autonomous U-Hawks that fly longer, carry more, and never hesitate when the mission turns deadly? Let me know in the comments. This is DIB Dispatch, where billion-dollar projects meet battlefield reality, and where 40-year-old helicopters just learn to fly themselves into the future.